Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Garage Studio Modelers. I'm Dave Forrest and this is my good friend Harvey Lowe. And in today's episode, uh, we're going to talk about a new build that I'm starting, which is the Stug 3G with Winter Ketten. This is the new Blitz kit from Tacom. It is a wonder to build. Um, they have a whole series of, of Stug uh, 3Gs that they have out. Uh, I have almost all of them. Really? Um, and they're, uh, yeah, they're great kits. The the Blitz means that they're a little bit easier to construct. There's not as much uh, detail. Mm -hmm. um, not that the not that the regular Tacom kits are, are generally problematic. Uh, but I've always wanted to do a winter whitewash vehicle. This will be the first one that I do. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. I may even I may even go all in and put it on some type of base. Oh, right, so with some groundwork, so that uh, that and may crew have... figures, perhaps. No, no, no crew right. figures. Let's let's. let's <laughs> which which kit is the one that has the crew figures inside? It's oh, that's the. Uh, I think it's the border models. That's cool. Yeah. Now you have all the suits. Have you gone over all of them and said this one's the best? I think this one is the best. Um, and 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 because just because of the, I think the level of detail, the mm. accuracy, um, the ease of the construction. Mm. Um, I have I have a couple of the old Tamiya kits, the the Stug three Gs in my um, uh, in my stash. Mm -hmm. I haven't quite I haven't gotten to building yet, but this is this is fantastic. It, wow, it's very easy. The link and length tracks are beautiful. Um, you know, on this one, yep. I've decided to add a few things to okay. it, which I'll get into in a minute. Right. But out of the box, you can build a very nice a very nice Stug three G. Wow. They're, they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous little kits. Um, they, they give you all. Of, they have everything you need. Like you, have, you get the grills. Mm. You get some of the photo etch details. Um, you have the molded on clamps that you can just kind of drill out the handle part to make them look realistic. You know, a little mm. bit more mm -hmm. realistic. Um, but yeah, they're very, they're very nice. They're and and very no happy. one's ever said there's accuracy issues, correct? Like, you know, some people, oh, this one's really wrong. No. Okay. Not. I. I know. And I yeah. haven't. You know, to be honest, I don't follow mm. but from my yeah. and i'm not a stug expert but right. uh from my limited knowledge from my amateur knowledge i think yeah, yeah. they're 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 nicely done they're i nice see done. all your accessories here too david yeah so we're gonna we're gonna put some uh we're gonna put some detail a little bit of detail into this mm. um so we've got uh, just to, and we'll get into a little bit more detail when we get to the close-up shot but we've got the, i guess the most prominent thing is this new matlet with the um uh you know with the, the canvas mm. covering on it already cool. with the tarp on it uh, I'll talk a little bit about how to, how to approach that. Um, we'll talk about spare tracks and the fact that I'm sacrificing um, some aftermarket for spares and why why I would think that's that's a good idea to do. Okay. There's a bunch of 3D printing has revolutionized the hobby. Yeah. So there's a lot of details. I've got some like workshop details here, some buckets, uh, uh, some funnels for uh, for uh, fuel and oil, uh, some tools. And, uh, and where did you get these? Those I ordered online. I think I got them from Work BNA. Workshop tools. Yeah, it's very very cool. Yeah. So the amount of the amount of stuff that you can get that's three D printed. Is, yeah. is is amazing. Yeah. And that's, and that, that's a whole other debate in the hobby. But yeah. we'll we'll. Do you remember the old day? All those things would be like almost hand cast in molds. Yeah, or photo etched. Yeah, or photo to, etched. To, yeah, which too flat. It I really has. I really do. Yeah, I'm not yeah. a big fan of the photo etch. Um, and then there's there's other there's a little, this this little set from Elephant that I used for uh, toe clamps. Um, so some of the some of the brackets and, and uh, clasps for it, which uh, which really enhance the model. Also three D printed. All three D printed, mm. and we'll talk a little bit how to get them off the right. uh, uh, off their backing. There's some nice tool clamps here from uh, from MJ Miniatures, which I've also used, and we'll talk about kind of how do you you know how do you prep the kit part for uh, for adding that. Uh, and just the overall approach, the nice little fire extinguisher here from Panzer Art. This, mm -hmm. this canvas thing I was talking about earlier is also from Panzer Art. Um, and we're going to throw some stowage on this. Where's the muzzle brake from? From the kit? Yeah, this, so the so a good point. The, the barrel, the metal barrel and the muzzle brake are from the kit. I'm probably going to replace those with something... Even the metal barrel? Yeah, well, because, if, yeah, well... Yeah, maybe. Oh, why? Because, well, I can understand the muzzle brake. Sometimes they have fine well, like, But if you're going to order something and you just, you know what I mean? Like, you may as well. Yeah, buy the whole thing. Which brings me to my next question, sir. Do you buy, when you build a model, do you buy every accessory for this? Or are there somewhere, you know, it's out of box. I'm just going to do it out of box. But this one seems like you bought everything for it. Well, this is all stuff I had. Ah. So I didn't actually buy any. This is all stuff that I, I went through my mm. massive stash of aftermarket mm. and mm. pulled all the stuff from that. But yeah, sometimes I will, like depending on the build, like if there's new sets and some of the aftermarket stuff, you kind of have to get when yeah, you can get it. True. 
right? Or, or True. decal sets it's, you have to get. When especially you decals, decals. Especially those. Decals, decals. Yes, especially those. I find that a lot of uh, uh, manufacturing for decals, in particular aircraft, um, you're like limited. And then once they're gone, they're gone. And you put them in, I put them in uh, Ziploc bags to protect them. And sometimes, I you know those things that keep dry goods dry? I forget what, they're, like silicon something, oh, those silicone, packs yeah. that you get with electronics. And I keep those and I throw them in the where the decals are stored in a box to keep them dry. That's a good idea. I should think about that. Mm. Yeah. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, the... Uh, uh, the paint scheme will be like yes. I said. It'll be a whitewash. So we'll mm -hmm. do whitewash. So we'll just do a, a regular Panzer yellow. We'll modulate that, and mm -hmm. then we'll go over it with the whitewash. We'll do that on camera. A lot of weathering, a lot of stowage. Um, I was so on the topic of stowage. This is where references come in real handy because mm -hmm. I was kind of agonizing mm -hmm. about the fact that um, in the in the uh, the kit they give you spare track for like to you know to kind of loop on the on the front here to drape on the front mm -hmm. uh, these these glacis plates or whatever they're called uh, and along along the back as well but they're different types of tracks oh. so they're they're not the wind they're not they're not the the winter cat they're the regular tracks but they have the hollow guide horns and I'm like well that's not make sense with a, like a vehicle with stowage would it have different types of tracks and the answer to that is a resounding yes because they would put anything they could on there for extra armor, extra armor spare right. parts and there are several pictures in this book by Peco Publishing. Um, so the, I think this is one of five volumes they have on the Stug. Um, five? Yes, yeah, so and I, I, I'm embarrassed to say I have all five. Mm. Uh, but this is the one that I found was the most compelling. And there's lots of great reference shots of pans of, uh, stug, of Stugs with uh, all kinds of different uh, tracks and you know how they were fixed to the vehicle. So having these types of references mm -hmm. are... And I know that like, today with the internet, um, you know, the world's your oyster in terms of pictures, but it's nice to have these, I don't I, know, I'm old fashioned. I like having a too. book in my hands, yeah. looking at it with a, you know. And a hardcover book. book. I like hardcover books. Yeah, hardcover yeah, books yeah. are nice. I'm old school too. I like to have the book. Now they take up a lot of room. Um, and you can see here, like this is, and what, maybe we'll get a, a close up shot of this, but you can see here is just like three, and, there's, and they just threw like three links of, win, of winter cut and track on the front here for some improvised mm. um, added armor. I presume that they could also use T-34 tracks. Where Anything, yeah. Find, yeah. And you right? see, and you see evidence yeah. of that, right? There's, mm. there's, I think there's even pictures in this book where there's some yeah. T-34 tracks that they put on. So, so all I have to say is that after doing some research, like mixing and maxing yeah. uh, or matching of tracks on a, on a vehicle for extra stowage, especially, you know, Eastern Front German. Yeah. Um, That's yeah, cool. Very prevalent. Now back to this, you've built this whole model. Everything is glued, including the wheels and tracks? Uh, well, the, the, the upper the upper superstructure is not okay it, and yeah and i just have it just kind of sitting on it which again it talks to the fit of this right it looks right. like it's all together but it's not but yeah but the tracks and then the wheels are glued in place and I will you're gonna them. weather them yeah. all really yeah, which I, is what i usually do yeah, yeah we'll, we'll we, show that in a subsequent episode okay because we talk about that i don't i do my but it is a lot of work when you do the track separately and the wheel separately yeah just but you, yeah. you don't you don't see it that's true so, i mean so if i pull this off like you know, yeah. under under here, yeah. Like you're not going to see anything. You're not going to see yeah. those tracks. Yeah, that's true. So I, as long yeah. as I get in there with good primer, and I'll prime because I'm doing this in a Panzer yellow, hmm. I'll prime it in a dark brown, which is a roughly a fifty fifty mix yeah. of Mister Surfacer black yeah. and mahogany. Well, you mentioned earlier, and people watching the uh, episodes on uh, the Sheridan, um, you suggested not to use the mask for the rubber portion of the wheels, and I did. And you're right; it's quick. Yeah. Right. It, yeah. By the time you put dust on it, you're right. Now I'm still doing those wheels separately, as people will follow that those episodes. But I can see your point. It is quicker this way. It is. Yeah. That's yeah. that's a big it's time. Quick. And you, and you don't really like the, yeah. the the reward for going through the pain of masking the. Yeah. It's not. You, you, really you can't get, see much in 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 there anyway. Unless it's a very clean vehicle. Right. 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 If it's a very right. clean vehicle, then it's probably worth right. masking everything off. But right. you know, but this will be far from clean. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot of mud, and yeah. and there's also um, some snow products. So I'm gonna, so I, I kind of picked these up yesterday from uh, our good friends at Sunward Hobbies. Uh, some some AK snow and ice sparkles. I have some other. I have like micro balloons and stuff in my, mm. in my stash mm. as well. So we're gonna put snow on the tracks, parts of the vehicle. That's cool. All right, just but yeah. that that's that's risky because that, if yeah. you put too much, it looks it does horrible. Less is best. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Remember when you were a kid, you'd, you'd build like a winter vehicle and you'd get that, remember that snow you would spray on the Christmas tree, that yeah, big snow that, you just that like, foam? That was, yeah. Let's spray them all yeah. with that. While, while we're on that topic, one, one of the favorite techniques back, I remember when, when they, what is it, scale military modeling back in the 70s, is you'd let the gunk sit at the bottom of your thinner jar. And you just let it sit there after cleaning brushes, and you use that gunk as a weathering thing on your model. I remember that was such a cool technique. Yeah. And you'll see uh, on the episodes on the Sheridan, there's just so many weathering products I use now. It, the, the, the key is where do you stop? Do you add? How much do no, you do? Yeah. The key is you got to know when to stop. Well, that and, and there's some of the, but all the products out there really just, it's, it, again, I, I keep going back. It's a matter of convenience. Like you, you yeah. can do all the weathering yeah. with oils. Um, and maybe if you want a little bit of texture pigments, I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like even like I and I and I love like I love the like that dark brown acrylic paste that I used to kind of use. On you the other love side. that stuff. That that's but that's convenience. I, I prefer oils, but we'll talk about but oils. Yeah, and oils, oils you can you can you can yeah. get very targeted with and yeah. very subtle yeah. with and but. Uh, but back to this, that looks great. You had you had this. Now you you left this unglued just because you're not there yet, or were yeah, because I want to yeah, because I got to glue this. I, I wanted to it. talk about how I'm going to fix this and it. the whole process for that. Um, right. Uh, and I got a little bit more work to do, but it's almost yeah. It's but probably... essentially, once that's glued on, there's you just weather. There's there's no other sub assembly you're going to put on top, but you're painting separately, right? This is it. Except, except for stowage. Yeah, 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 like maybe some of the stowage. Yeah, and yeah, track, yeah. Extra track. Yeah, I'll yeah, pull yeah, those yeah. off and might weather those separately. Right. Or I might do them on the vehicle. I haven't figured that out yet. And I'm still figuring out, like I haven't put on the, the tow cables yet. Yeah. And, I'll, and I might not. What I might do is I might, like these are beautiful 3D printed mm. clamps. I might use those and, and then just put the cables in haphazardly. Because you see that again. You do, yeah. You know, going yeah. through your references, you, you see evidence of that. So, um, so yeah, so there's still a few a few decisions, but I'm 80% of the way there. So question, are you doing a vehicle specific in the book to this? Or do you just kind of like... No, it's kind of a collage okay. Okay. of vehicles. Because they were, right? I mean, you didn't take every photo of every vehicle. No. Right. No. Right. And, it, and it's, um, you know, I, I think the only markings I'll put on it will be the, the, the crosses. And then everything mm -hmm. else will be, I think, unless, unless maybe, maybe in my research or in my... Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll go. I'll go through my decals if I find something that you know specific vehicle that I want to do. But uh, I, I think, think this would just be a collage. Yeah, because I mean, I'm not a huge expert on German armor, but they didn't have the extensive serial numbers like Allied tanks did, right? So I know that if you're doing a specific vehicle, if if it's Allied, like a short, well, if you want right? to, you could. You, right, you'd have to get that license plate. To get, do you know what I mean? How far do you go? Yeah, to, but, yeah but again, on the Eastern Front, they, they just right. schlep stuff together. Yes, they would right. recover parts yeah. from different vehicles. Right. They would, you know, so it's a bit of a mission just to get the, you know, whatever they could operation on the field. I, I think for me, the only time that I would choose a specific vehicle if it was really, really unique, either as a diorama or vignette setting, yeah. or the vehicle had such a weird modification, then I would stick to that yeah. photo. And do that, yeah. right? Yeah. But but you're right. If it's a generic vehicle, you can kind of. There's lots of reference out there. I mean, I mean, I, I'm sure I could pick a vehicle out of here, but you know, right. And but, then, I haven't, but I haven't found that specific vehicle yet. So unless so unless something changes, maybe I maybe I stumble across it. But right. if I don't, it will just be a collage mm. of different. That's a good way to say a yeah, collage. A collage of different vehicles. So um, yeah, so I guess what we'll do is we'll switch over to the close-up view. I'll go through a little bit more detail some of the stuff that's on there. Uh, and then we'll uh, we'll go through the exercise of putting on some of the 3D clamps and how what I use to how I detach them and what I use to put them on. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. So let's get into the uh, let's get into the details of this. Um, so let's let's talk about this. the first thing we'll talk about. So I'm just going to pull this off. It's not I mentioned. It's not on. Is the um, is this piece? So this is uh, so this is a. Uh, a Tart covered mantlet from uh, Panzer Art. Panzer Art. Yeah, and I think I, I just picked it up at a so it's resin cast. I picked it up at one of the shows. I think and I think I picked it up for a fairly good price. Um, there are some on the back. I did sand this flush and I just filled it in. There were some bubbles and whatnot. Not that you see any of this because it's going in, but there were some you know so there were some minor imperfections on the sides. So I just did with some uh, with some putty. Uh, I just sort of clean those up and. Um, the kit has, it kind of mounts the, uh, you know, kind of the mm. traversing mechanism on this thing. So I'm not going to do any of that. Yeah, I can't see it. And this thing yeah, just kind of slides in here. 
like so. So let me see. So this isn't glued on. Um, let me pull these tracks out. These aren't glued on. We'll talk about the tracks in a second. I've got this little hammer in there. While you're pulling those off, are you saying that you had to sand that flush only so that it could fit Problem. in better? Yeah. Yeah. That's the casting block, though, right? Like you didn't have to take a saw and cut any large. No, it, it, it all yeah, it came largely like this. Yeah, it just okay. there was a bit of a lip on it. Yeah, just to right, it and right. It out and deal with some of them. Now, now, just a note to the viewers: if you have resin with large casting blocks, um, do do that with a mask with water and yeah. do, do it outside. I have a table, little like, mini table saw that I got. Um, I think it was from Micromark, uh, and I use that for cutting large. And of course, watch your fingers. Because those casting blocks can be fairly large, but you're saying that the casting block here, it's very minimal then. You can just sand it smooth, fit it in, you don't yeah. have to take a saw. Yeah, very easy, very okay. easy process. Yeah, yeah. so very, and I, but I did wet sand it. Too. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah just absolutely. Just to, to keep the dust down, yes, that is yes. nasty stuff. So if I, if I flip this over. I see. see. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a bunch of CA glue or maybe 5 minute epoxy in here, mm -hmm. secured in place, and mm -hmm. then that'll be done. But mm -hmm. you can kind of still see down like like there's this you can see through it well you can't see through it but but there's a gap there's a, there's a bit of a gap there so i i think what i'm going to do is just make a small tarp I just to see. fit over and drape over this part and kind of fold it into the sides here ah i'll do it out of um, probably millie putt right right so i picked this up yesterday small just a small little tarp just to cover this up and you can see that again in some of the reference pictures where the crews would have put stuff in here just to prevent snow and got ice from it, getting in it, and jamming it. up the got it the but but in tarp. reality it could have been like that with a gap there the tarp maybe, i don't know maybe i just it looks it, kind of it, it looks does, odd because eh? you have like, all of a sudden it just comes to this sharp end yeah so it doesn't really look natural. So flip it over again now now there's some things like when i add resin parts and i want more strength I would put like a styrene sheet there and and glue it to it on the inside, but you don't bad. you don't have to do it, right? It's not a bad idea, actually. right? Yeah, maybe maybe that's what I'll do and just so that it's just something it's else solid. to anchor it's it. More, yeah, because you know how the you yeah, because you just don't to want to anchor the, it. Yeah, so right. That's, that's a good point. So maybe I'll, I'll add something there to do that. If you were to build that kit with the hatches open, could you still do the breach with this resin park? You, using you, the you could, you could. Yeah, there's some surgery, and I, I was I was debating doing that. Like, not that there's a lot to see yeah, in there, right. but I was debating having it so that I could keep it. But it's mm. no, okay, I didn't bother. But you could, yeah, you could do that for sure. So that and so just and I was, so this is the kit. So I, I all I did is I just kind of fix this in here with a little bit of um, blue tack. Mm. So I just put a little ball of blue tack. Just put this in. Um, you have to do some surgery on the barrel and probably any other barrel I would get. You have to do a bit of surgery because you, this only goes in so far. Yeah. And typically if they're made for the kit, it'll right. go yeah. further. Yeah, because you want the right... Yeah. So I just have to like, cut... So I just have to cut the... You know, I'll, I'll, I'll probably pull it out here and show you. And you can see here where I, I kind of marked it off. Yes, This is how of far it has to go inside. Right. So this was a lot longer, so I just cut that with uh, just a little razor yeah. saw. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you can see the... Well, it's actually the white tack in there. And the reason why I put this in is because when I'm situating it, um, so you just kind of eyeball it to make sure it's relatively straight. So when I'm putting it in, I'm just looking at it to make sure yes, right. that the gun the is yeah. kind of more or less pointing. And again, mm. it, like there's a bit mm. of there's a there's a bit of play with it, but just more or less that it's pointing straight, um, and just to get the side angle right. Now the side angle that means that this resin piece here has the gun in, at an angle that is set. You, you can't go up and down. You can a bit. Oh, you can a bit? A tiny bit. Tiny bit. Like, okay. the, like right. an elevator, just a tiny bit there. Okay. I can do that, right? Okay. But I'll keep it It's cool. It's yeah. very nicely cast. Look at the folds. Yeah. It. Panzer does amazing mm. resin stuff. They really do. So anyway, so that's this. I'll, I'll work on that a little bit later today, but I just mm. wanted to walk everybody through mm. the process and I'll kind of... Um, I'll probably have all all this buttoned up and, and primed the next time we see it. But okay. um, maybe what I'll do is I'll take a picture of what this looks like. I'll send it to Robert and show yeah. it in the next episode. Mm -hmm. So that's that part. Um, then we can get to all of the you know the tracks. I was talking about Che. These are aftermarket tracks from uh, the Kaizen, and I've used these before. They're great. They're beautiful. Like for for plastic, like no seams, very easy to put together. Like these little ends here are hollow. You can see through them, right? In the kit, they're kind of closed, like they're, they're kind of flashed in. Um, they're workable. 
So the question is, injection. Well, why would yeah, they're all injection. So why would you sacrifice these beautiful tracks just to put a, a series of spares on it? And my reasoning for that is, you know, if I have to, if I have a choice between using these as spare tracks on a kit versus running gear, yeah, because there's going to be so much mud and stuff on the on the running gear. If the if the kit supplied link and link tracks are decent enough quality, that's good enough because mm. there's going to be product on there. It's going to obscure some of the detail. Mm. You're not going to have that same level of product on here, mm. right? So you're going to see this a lot more, yeah. right? So yeah. Yeah. that's why I don't mind mm. sacrificing, you know, some of the like like you could do one vehicle with this, or you could do a series of, of you could support a series of vehicles in terms of but extra David, tracks. It's not a sacrifice if you do eight of these and you have these as spare, then it's not. Yes. Exactly. But yes, yeah, so, but, but aside, and the same thing with these, right? Like yeah. these are the ones that will go on the kind of the back. Um, Which one are these? Model casting? Yeah, these yeah, are model yeah, casting, yeah. right? Like, again, I picked up at a show for a yep. great price. Mm -hmm. So I'll use these as spare. And again, these will support other vehicles. Mm -hmm. So, um, and there's so much like the, like the World Series are now with tracks. Like there's yeah, so much 3D, like the old, 3D yeah. turn of tracks are, are gorgeous. Okay. So let's get, speaking of 3D, I came across this and I, and I thought, you know, this is kind of a blast from the past. This is like a detail set for the Stug 3 from Model Cast. Oh, nice. So this is all injection plastic. Nice. And this is what, this is the best you could get before the advent of 3D printing. But that's still nice. Though. It's very nice. And you have, um, so these are the same, and I don't know how well the camera's going to pick it up, but these are the same kind of tow cable clasps as you have uh -huh. here. But you put them together. So I'm going to put, um, I'll put some of the, yeah, I might mix and match just to have something different, but the, again, the world before 3D, uh, before 3D printing, right? And this, is, and this is like really gorgeous stuff and it still holds up well, to, a little bit of flash on it, but that's easy to clean up, holds up well to today's new technologies, right? I do find though that while well, 3D printing is it, it's where it's at, the stuff can be brittle, right? Compared to the injection, yes, it can yes. be brittle, and so you got to so be careful. It is, and it's funny. So I got this. I got this set from uh, from Elephant, yeah. and you get a big box like this. But look how small this is! Look. Wow, wow! That, wait a minute, that came in this box? Yes. And there's nothing else in here. No, aside from there was like maybe little popcorn, little foam popcorn. Really? That's, yeah, this is it. Do you, ever, do you ever remember as a child you used to look for that prize in the cereal box and you're scouring through the cereal and there's the little toy at the... Anyways, the, those, those yeah, are my, same, yeah. my bad memories from childhood. But, kind of, yeah, this kind of this kind of brought those back. Look at that, eh? That's yeah. why the big box. I don't know. Whoa, look at that. Yeah. So, yeah, so I have, I'm, I was trying to figure out, like, yeah, I have a bunch of these yeah, boxes. Yeah, but you see here, here again, bring that injection one back. So, so you look at this one and you look at the injection one like, it, you got to be really skilled to cut that out. And we're going to show how to do that. Right. Whereas this one is just out. So, yeah. they so have their bit, advantages. Yeah, these things are very brittle. So, and it's funny, like, they give you... So, they say this is for two vehicles. Two tow cable clamps and, and brackets for stug for, for two vehicles. Okay. Two vehicles. That's great. Mm. Um, but... And, and they give you exactly... Because each vehicle has four. So you have two vehicles for the actual clamps themselves. And then you have these little... Kind of these little brackets that the tow cable will kind of yeah. fold into. Just to support yeah. them and keep them in place. But they give you a lot more than... Like you need four per vehicle. And they give you... They give you, what, 15? And I was like, why do they give you so much? Well, I found out why. Yeah, because they're almost impossible to take off without <laughs> breaking them. Right. 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 But I find the best way to go is to use a razor Whoa. saw... And you use the the kind of the finer end of it, and let you do it. And you just kind of line up. Because so that, that so I'm going to take difficult. I'm going to take this one off here. So I'm just going to line this up, and I get it as close as close to the part as possible. By the way, uh, uh, viewers, this and is a, this is a hobby. This is a recreational hobby. Yeah, usually and, I have like. Uh, and we're so, we're sawing little bolts off resin. Yeah. Yeah. It's not so much of a hobby. It's, this is mildly terrifying because you don't want to break yeah, it. Yeah, right. That's why the old style, with if they made those bolts and injection, there you go. It's 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 quite easy to. Yeah, that's that's that is that is yeah. true. Usually, I have some very calm music. I might have a mm. cup of calming tea as I'm I'm calming, you know. No, not exactly. <laughs> I'm honest with you. Kind of making me nervous, Harvey. So I just saw this, and I think it's the best way. You, you, they, they say you can either use a sharp sc sharp scalpel, no. No, eh? It's too brittle, because mm, the stuff breaks. Mm, now, mm. one thing I, I'll continue sawing in a second. So this came up, so this came fairly protected with this 
Right. With this protecting thing mm-hmm. here. So I just I, that I just cut off with with nippers. Yes. Just so you can get out yes. the parts, right? Yes. Now we can get back to the song. While you're sawing, if you're cutting large chunks of resin, don't use your god hands. <laughs> don't no. use expensive. Use use something that's a little more yeah, uh, exactly. less use precise that you don't yeah. dull your god hand uh, snippers. So this stuff is pretty brutal. Yeah. But is, but you know what? Having said that though, this stuff is surprisingly resilient. Like it's tough. Hmm. It's true with the with the current types of resin out there. Uh, and I did recently purchase a 3D printer. It, it, it's much better quality resin. Have you started using a 3D printer? I have. I've printed a few things on it, but I, I want to design my own things. See, that's, a whole, print, that's, a that's a whole new... That's a whole work stream. Yeah, episode. for sure. I, I do a lot of scratch building, but I'm old school. I cast my own resin, and then I, I build things the old a la hardcover airfix way by gluing sheet styrene together. Yeah, that's a lost art. It is a lost art. But now I'm transitioning to, uh, uh, I've got a silhouette uh, printer by Cameo, and I use it a lot for mass. And I've now using a deep cut blade there to score um, images of, of tank plans in there so I can at least start using the machine for a much precision cut of the basic chassis. Yeah, the whole scratch building is a lost art, isn't it? It is. And, you know, I keep bring it. We talked about judging in an episode, but I, I still find that I think we're past the fit and finish criteria. I know I'm jumping all over the place. As the only criterion judging, I think we're losing the whole notion of complexity, scope, scope, scope of, effort, yeah. of effort, because they're all in the same category. Well, that's the problem, though, because that, okay, so not, not, to, not to go down the rabbit hole of a judging conversation, yeah. but. Um, that's that's where inexperience comes into play. Yeah, you're right. Because they'll just look at fit and finish. If you take that while you're so that, while so you're standing, so that luckily just popped off. Oh, great! But it popped off into my hand, and you can see. Well, maybe you can't. Um, but pretty close. So that's I don't actually have close. to do any further that's sanding. Good. Right? Did you have to? You don't have to sand it. I don't have to sand it. So you can see here. I cut it off the block. I got it as close as possible. It took time, but worth doing. Don't use nippers on these things right. because A, it'll, it will yeah. break the part, break and B, part. even if you do get it off successfully, it's going to pop off into perpetuity, never yes. to be seen again. So back to the the judging comment we just made is applicable here, Dave, because while you're doing these little clamps and you're putting them on, it's requiring you the extra effort to go that route. That's right. But if you had another kit, maybe not this one, or you didn't replace the clamps, and you just built the model a la the clamps that were molded on, it is easier for you to win because it's fit and fit. Right, right now you're risking that little clamp having a little miscut or a glue mark. That's what I'm Absolutely. saying. Right? That's yeah. what I'm saying. So I think the fit and finish criteria is actually doing a disservice to modeling because it's a, a disincentive for you to do this complex type of modeling. Yeah. Just just saying. I'd be interested to hear people's comments. Yeah, for sure. And but this but this is but this is fairly easy to e- do. Okay. Because all you're doing is just cutting a part off, putting it on. Putting it on, yeah. Right? As opposed like if this was in the old days where you used, have to use a photo etch. Yes, a little right. bit more skill in doing that. Yeah, yeah. Right? Putting that on, a little bit more risky. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, uh, and and I think amazing. again that goes back yeah. to yeah. if you if you build and you judge, you tip it, and you, you have an experience take, builder. Yeah. You, you know, like you know, you know right. one kit from the other. You right. know, like in a like a, a vacuum form is going to be way different. It's it's never going to look as good as as a state of the art kit. You or know, or or and it takes a lot more work. Right, or a Tamiya kit versus something like an Ace model in seventy yep. seconds. You know what I mean? A like Revell versus an Ace model. They're two completely, but they're in the same category. Exactly. So, uh, anyways, we so, digress. Yeah. So I'm gonna so just like took time to get this that, that got it right eh yeah so there's the and there is a there is a like the the kit part would sit in here right but this will be i think just big enough to cut that's a to cover that's great that, right and you can't see it that looks good that's great and then, you didn't even have to sand it no and then what i would do to fix it in place is i use this stuff this this ammo mig ammo cement extra thin cement and, and it, I, I guess it's similar to the mm. uh to the tamiya but not the not the not this one. But there's another one that they have that's a different green cap mm. that instantly bonds. So it, th- this takes a little bit of time. This is really fast. But this will use bond styrene to resin. Yep. And, and there's no other need for any type of other glue. 
After this, that? well, I would. You may want to secure it. I see. But if you like, I can just touch this, and it'll secure Especially it enough where I can. Yeah. Right. But what I might do is I might use something thicker. Right, because it's such a small part. You yeah. want to get it right into the position. Yeah. So what I might do is I take this yeah. off. And and while you're taking it off, I in, in a situation like that, I seldom use um, super glue because it's instant and you can't move it. Yeah. Whereas so, you could use five minute epoxy. Well, right, or or use a little slower setting soup. So I just oh, yeah. put a little thicker, thicker almost gel type glue. Oh, uh, okay. And it's a slow setting glue. You, setting you need glue. the slow setting yeah. to position. Like you can do it with. That's why, like if you, if you did fix it with, with this, with this, with the thin, extra thin cement. Um, then you can go. Then you can go at it with the, yeah. Yeah. you know, the the thin, the thin crazy glue. I can't believe you're doing that small part in this garage. I need a little lamp. Yeah, I might regret doing this. Yeah. So I just I'm gonna put this in here and get as much of it as possible. And again, if uh, if there's extra that gets out, I can use the bonder mm -hmm. to remove the extra sure. bits. But that looks pretty good. Let's put that aside. Tow cable clamps and brackets. Yeah, the big box for the small one. It is. So this is, and, I, and again, when I secure it, I'll secure my hand, not the steadiest. No, that's not quite right. You do have a steady hand. I'd have to use a light. And that glue allows you to move it around a bit. Yeah, it'll it'll stay. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think that's good enough. It's off alignment by about a third of a millimeter, oh, so you, good. you lose in the contest. That's good you. actually. Yeah, that's right on this. We'll let that. We'll let that sit now. If I if I you can use the. Um, Instant. Right, and then you can apply a little bit of instant to secure yeah, it. Yeah, secure it. But we'll just let this sit. So that, again, so that's how easy it is yeah. to use these. That's amazing. These claps. And where do you get these? Mini. Well, I just uh, a local hobby store. You yeah. Can get them, or you can get them. I'm sure if you. That's a like, saw, though, right? Not a not an exacto like sharp blade. That's a saw. That's a saw. Yeah, it's got so it's fine, got teeth in it. Yeah. So you got to use the fine fine razor. Like got there's teeth a in it. there's a there coarser side and a fine yep, side. Use the fine side for cutting these. And that's it. That's as simple as this stuff is. So we'll let that sit. We'll let that. But that's, you know, that's great. And it's the same. You know, we'll look at these clamps which I've used on, like here. Um, these are clamps that I've used from this set. Oh, I see. So what I do, and maybe we'll, while we're here. So I've got my extra little, spare parts thing. So for example, like the hammer, the hammer I might just put, um, kind of sitting in the back. Kind of here, I might just put it. I saw a picture and I said, oh, that looks cool. So I'll have to take off. There's, there's a kind of a little holder here mm -hmm. where the, the, the head of the hammer kind of slides into. Oh kind of sand that off. Oh my gosh, that's but, tiny. Um, but for this, this I'll put on the vehicle and I'll put a clamp here. But the, but the problem is, how do you get the clamp on? Right? So again, Same type of thing. Right. These are gorgeous. These are really nice. Hmm. You can get them directly from MJ Miniatures, but uh, B&A also carries them. You and, got quite a few there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you got all kinds. And then you can see, same same principle. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take. Uh, is there all this? There's some. So if you want, like the nice thing about these, if you want to have them open. Oh, I see. You can have yeah, them opened. Yeah. So I'm going to take one of these guys, and again, and the same using the saw, the same type of. And the, and the nice thing about this is that it shows you on the back, mm. it shows you ah, how each of the class that's, are that's, attached. That's helpful, right? So, and that, I mean, that's a nice touch, MJ. Well, well done. Yeah, well done. I'll give you kudos for that. I would think though that most of these class, correct me if I'm wrong, as well as the viewers out there. There's quite a lot for German Allied, but very little for things like Japanese vehicles and Chihaz. You haven't come across any of them? No. Okay. You're right, it's either all Allied or yeah, German. Yeah. Nobody cares about the Japanese. <laughs> Japanese armor, yeah. Japanese armor. We'll do an episode on Japanese armor colors that people keep asking. So, 
This will take, this will be a little fine because this is a bit of a hollow piece. Mm. You could use water in there to, to, to increase the uh, ability to cut through and provide a little bit of uh, give, I suppose. Or do you just do it dry? Uh, I, yeah, I just do it dry. I mean, you could use water, yes. So this might take a little while. Yeah, well, while you're talking, you ever notice that when you're doing these types of things, you mentioned earlier, they fly on the floor. You know? That's why I have my thumb on this. Yes, right. There so you go. That, that, so you just, just support. Like, I'm not pressing I'm, down on it. I'm observant. Just supporting. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to fling. And when it flings, it doesn't just land at your feet. It goes in the opposite oh, part yeah, of the room. You'll never room, see it so again. You'll never yeah, see it again. Even if it did land at your feet, you yeah. would never find it. Step on it. Roll a chair yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Again, it's a recreational hobby. Yeah, it's supposed to be calming. But again, when you're doing that, you want to make sure that it's precise in your cut and a precise where you glue it and, and locate it. Otherwise, again, as I said before, you better do it right or they'll ding you in it for judging. So just make sure that you take your time to do this. Yeah, so I'm just, so I'm just trying to cut because the, the, the problem is the blocks are at different heights here. So I'm going to try and cut. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just try and cut through mm. these other ones here. I'm going to flip this over and do it from here. Yeah, you're right. I do find using even god hands on some of these is so brittle it'll snap the part. The yeah. same also applies to uh, canopies, clear canopies. If you're removing the canopy from the larger, um, I'll call it a plastic acetate sheet, uh, you got to be careful about using clippers. Otherwise, the the break in the uh, uh, the the acetate sheet will will could have a break that cuts into the clear parts, and I've had that happen. Agreed. So now the other thing we're gonna like once, assuming we get this off in one piece, we are gonna have to cut it because we have to get it around uh, the axe handle. Ah, uh, I see. All right. So now let's get back. Go back to the. Under. Now, what while you're cutting, you prefer these still over photo etch? Oh yeah, really? Because oh. photo etch is too thin. Would you say? Is it it's too thin? Like, I hate full wedge. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, unless it's a big, like, unless it's like a grill or yeah, I can't yeah. stand full wedge. Yeah, I'm not too terrible uh, with it. I'll never build. Keen. I'll never build a complex ship. Yeah, we have an episode coming up that'll coincide while Dave is standing uh, with the uh, my release of the one two hundred Yamato fine scale. We'll we'll do a uh, article on it. Uh, come, uh, I think it was September. Uh, we will have an episode dealing with the build of that one two hundred Yamato. And uh, since we're talking about photo etch, yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot of photo etched ships for sure. So it is off. It is off. And it's and fairly clean. Yeah. So we got lucky there. Well, you know. Now. You do leave, need a lot of luck in your modeling, David, I'm just saying. I do, actually. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Um, so now the, now the question is, how do you so how do you get this around? Yeah. So you have to break it. So break this, it? Yeah. So this is the other, this is the second danger. So the first danger zone is getting it off. The second yes. danger zone. You have to break it? You have to break it. Yeah, because you have to get it around. Because you're not going to slide it over. Like, if I didn't have this piece yes. on here, yes. I could slide it over. But I need this piece because I don't have I don't have a 3D. And, and, this, and actually, and this is another one of those things where the, the kit supply part is good, mm. right, for this little piece here. Okay. But the clamp, not so good. Mm. So here. Now, here's here's where the controversy is, I think. You you're, you you want to go to town on this model, I understand. Mm -hmm. I think for other modelers who may not wish to do this, you could get away with just using the clamps. Yeah, yeah, I've done those in the past. Right, Very right. Nice. So it, it really is what your preference is. You don't have to add these 3D, right? Uh, but if you do, it is your choice, and it, it, it then adds some uniqueness to the model, that is for sure. Okay, so now I've cut it. Huh. Okay. See, you, you can I see we're doing, the, we're doing that a lot. Did you get it? It hit my belly. Ah. My belly actually well, came in handy. Well, it is big, handy. so it catches things. It That's did. Good. It actually came in handy here. Okay. So, so, you know, we can do, we're doing this live. There's no bloopers or takeouts. Yeah. So, so this is the, this is the tricky part. So this is the third danger zone. So oh, now that I've got. For a clamp. All this for a clamp. Yeah. So now what I've got to do is kind of slide this over and hope. And maybe maybe I get some help here, but you don't I, want to you don't want to slide it too much. Because I think I'm going to go back to building those old one thirty second monogram ones maybe, from the seventies where the tools all molded on. It's just painted. Maybe out of the box isn't so bad. <laughs> 
like I said about judging, if you're going to do this, do it right. Yeah. Okay, so let's see if I can slide this in here. Like so. So he, here's an example where if you, you are doing this, mention it in your notes if you do like to compete. We're not saying that you all have to compete because then you can let the judges know that there's additional complexity and scope in the model and I think that should be taken into consideration even though the fit may not be 0 0.005 millimeters perfection the fact that you're going to all that work deserves some credit but that's just my humble opinion I see what you're doing and you'd use the same glue to attack it yeah mm, wow David it's amazing you're doing this live on the camera Yeah, the, 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 the viewers are looking at this and say, well, gee, yeah. this isn't such a good idea. Well, you know, it does add, but again, I keep saying this, mm -hmm. make sure that you, you do it right. And if you like this kind of fine jewelry-like work, then all the power to you. Otherwise, build it right out of box to me, uh, Edward, whatever. Is that cut all the way through? I didn't cut it all the way. No. There it is. That's amazing what you're doing. I, I couldn't do it in this light. There you go. I see what you're doing. Yeah, so I'm just trying to bend this. Now, you're adding these little details. We'll get to weathering one day on, on a future episode of this. But that's where I find that less is best because why cover up and throw lots of mud in that area when you've covered the, 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 the clasp, right? Let's do some weathering that allows you to see the effects of all this delicate work that you're doing. Well, this you'll see because it'll be right on the very yeah, the top part of the vehicle. Of the vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, if you're gonna do that and you wanna put, say, uh, tank riding troops on it, you don't wanna hide all this beautiful detail with there a bunch go. of people sitting over the detail. So we got it on, yeah. And that's it. See how easy that was? So that, okay, so that took, uh... That took an that? hour. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so from start to finish, I'm thinking 20 minutes for one clasp-ish. Yeah. yeah. 20 minutes. Okay. All right. So it's a hobby. It's a hobby. It's a, hobby. It's a yeah. recreational hobby. So, that's a... You hear your wife doing, what are you doing down there, David? I'm applying going, clasps. Going crazy. To my tools. Going mental. Could you not interrupt me? Yes, yeah. Right. I yeah. can't. So... Anyway, so that was a success. So it's yeah. on there. Um, we'll, uh, well, it's on some upside down. But anyway, we'll fix that after. But yeah, uh, it looks, you know. And then once you get it on, there'll be a future episode where you're really good at painting uh, uh, wood handles and you'll show that to effect. That's right. Okay. Let's rotate that. Now it's right side up. Hmm. So, but it, again, it kind of speaks to the durability of, of the 3D printed resin. Hmm. Right, because it didn't. You know, it's it's strong. It's yeah. a little springy. Yeah. Right. You just have to yeah. be. You just have to be a little bit careful with it. You have to respect it. Um, it's almost nice as if it had a bit of rubbery bounce to it. That way, yeah. it, it's not brittle and it breaks. Yeah. Because I'm sure I'm sure there'll be new iterations of it that'll. But it's but for it's, sure. it's still fairly. It's still fairly durable. You know, I while we're on it, I'm working on a uh, Balaton model SM75, and it's got you know what do you call those those. Uh, weights for the ailerons you know the, the look like a little shoehorn what are they called counterweights for the, when they put them on ailerons and aircraft the oh, italian aircraft yeah them. like german some of the like yeah. Ailerons on them, yeah that's resin like counterbalances thank you that's resin in the kit like these mm. and i found that as you're cutting them and you're gluing them like your clasp there the only problem with these on aircraft is they tend to get knocked off and very very brittle yeah so I actually used spares from the spare box. So it also depends on the situation where if it's so brittle, make sure that it's not exposed that you would you would bump it. And then you'd, you'd have to seriously think, yeah. right? But the nice thing about these cons is they're, is they're fairly, you know, they're fairly yeah. insulated, they're fairly protected. Yes, right. right, right. And so this will, so after going through that, so if, I was, if there was any debate on whether I was going to put this on the vehicle with a clamp or just have it sit in right. the rack, it's sitting in the rack. You know? Right. Yeah. 
Do you realize that 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 uh, if, if by doing all this work, uh, that ultimately you want this detail to show? Yes. So again, don't put a tarp over it. Don't put a soldier sitting on it. Make sure that the storyline is there and you can see the clamps and people look at the detail. Exactly. I've always said that the success of a model is how long uh, viewers look at it. Yeah, how long you keep the eye on it. And it's always something like the stowage yeah. or something. Or There's a little clasp. Grease stain, yes. something to keep the, the eye on. Right. So I think that's it. So, that, so I'm going to finish. So for the next episode, we'll have it all built. Mm -hmm. We'll have it uh, primed. We'll yep. have the stowage figured out, uh, and then we'll get to into modulation. We'll get into painting the uh, the yellow, the Panzer yellow on it. Good. All right. Oh, um, there was a question. Yes. From we do monitor our emails from a Harry Abbott that came in uh, just yesterday. Actually, uh, it says, uh, "Whom do you guys think makes the best Panzer gray, or do you have a mix?" Thanks. Um, so, uh, Harry, I would Harry Abbott. I would invite you to look at our our uh, Fifty Shades of Panzer Grey yes. episode. Yes. But the mix I like using is I love the new Tamiya lacquers. Mm -hmm. I love spraying with them. I like the Tamiya Panzer Grey as a base, and I like lightening it with their Ghost Grey colors because the Ghost Grey colors that they have are, have a little bit of blue in them. Yes. And they just you yes. Know, they, they, I like the blue tint. Yeah. Now, do they have that lacquer acrylic in an equivalent no. to acrylic? No, really? they have they have the Panzer gray in acrylic, and yes, acrylic but, but they not. don't have the ghost gray colors. I see. Yeah. So that's what. I, so I I just love that. But you could use the lacquer base and then use acrylic ghost colors on top. No. If you can get them, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Maybe, oh. maybe you get them from the AK range. I see. They're not available. I get you. Right. I get you. They're yeah. all available consistently in the yeah. lacquer line of paints. Yeah. But Harry, check out our, our, our Panzer yeah. Grey episode. We, we talk a lot about the various mixes and whatnot. There's also a modulation set that uh, mm. Gunsy has that I like using, Mr. Color set. Yep. Same type of thing. Yep. Not as blue. I do find that with the German tanks, and again, I'm not an expert in those colors, but I like adding a tint of blue to them. Just to give it that yeah. warmth. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So we'll call it there. So that's All it right. for, for today's episode. Thanks very much. Thanks for sticking with it. I know it was a bit uh, long and, yep. and uh, um, yeah, it was yeah. a bit of a tedious process. That's but uh, thanks, everybody. Thank you. We'll, uh, we'll see everybody uh, next time around. Take care all. Bye-bye.